doing all the purchasing yourself or yeah and did you ever think about bringing in a laborer just to handle the because it's labor intensive right to handle that aspect of it while and allow you to just source more I have somebody who handles labor for me. I have somebody who, you know, as soon as it's in the warehouse, he will list it on uh, Inventory Lab mm -hmm. and uh, and then prep and pack. I've hi hired a few people. Most I've let go. He's been with me the longest. Mm -hmm. Kind of does it unsupervised and, you know, typically there's not many questions and usually not too many issues. It, the caffeine late night doesn't affect me. Like I can have a coffee and go right to bed. Yeah. And I think during the day it just kind of keeps me level because yeah. I've had so much caffeine that <laughs> now I just need it. Four kids. Yeah. Four kids. Yeah. Four kids. yeah. And then thirty kids at work. So. <laughs> right. I'm constantly putting out fires. So. Isn't that what the, the job is though? It's not On supposed to be. Not eventually. The, the goal is to be a business owner, not an operator. Mm -hmm. I think for all of us. I think that's going to be the hardest part, though, is letting go. It, it's your baby. <laughs> it, it is difficult to, to let go of things, but I'm I'm okay with it because now I've come to different levels, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I've let go a lot of my business, like, now. Like, I let Eric handle a lot of the day-to-day -day operations, and I focus on the software aspect. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm working with my uh, developers every day, and that was a long process, kind of. First letting Eric, you know, handle the sourcing, and then... You know, giving a lot of that relate. I didn't. I like three years ago. None of my buyers had the relationships with the uh, brands or the suppliers. Like they uh, they would put together orders, they'd give them to me, and then I would send them out and have all the contact. And it was about like you said, letting go. I was definitely being very controlling and well, it's double the work, kind of right. It was, but I have. Yeah. Control issues, <laughs> you know. It was like I built this thing from the ground up. It was just me in the beginning, and uh, you know, and so you know, it was like she said, my baby. So it was it was difficult, but you know, I've known Eric my whole life, so I trust him. And uh, then my my other uh, person on my team's my uncle. You know, he handles the finances and stuff. But it, yeah, so for for me, back to what you were saying about uh, trying to find people for for sourcing, where you know, the people that are with me now, a lot of them been with me three, four years, but I can't tell you, you know, what we have thirty employees. We've probably had two hundred, and a lot of them have just come and gone within the first three three weeks, four weeks, because you just quickly learn. You're like, ah, oh, this is. You know, and it sucks because it is a waste of time, but it's like the only way you're gonna learn. So you kind of exactly that same mentality with like, like just trying these new products that you're about to try. You just gotta try people and you know, you will find the right person for, that will help you grow. Someone that has your mindset and will help you grow. Oh, for sure, I, I get it. Yeah. It's just harder to execute versus yeah. uh, verbalize. Yeah, much harder, much harder. But. It's the way you can scale to the next level so you can worry about more important things that you could be doing for your company. Like imagine if you had somebody in the store doing all the purchasing and they were purchasing and sourcing it the same way you do. I have a buyer on my team that's better than me and Eric combined buying. She's amazing. I mean, she does, you know, like just phenomenal job with two of our larger uh, wholesalers that we work with. I couldn't have, but I would never have got there if I didn't, you know, give her that without controlling. Listen, some people have better rapport with other people. It just works that way, right? No matter mm -hmm. how, you, no matter how much you want to have a good relationship with somebody, somebody might have a better relationship. You might click better with that person. So that may be what it is. Uh, females are more meticulous. So when it comes to purchasing and sourcing, they'll see things that men don't, that we miss. And so she does a much better job. Got it. Do you do a lot of meetups? We've done a few. We've done a few. This is our first time ever mm -hmm. uh, coming to something. Yeah, yeah, so. We're just like sponges, like 
absorbing everything in. Yeah, that's great because, and then, and then you kind of, you know, you just want to be, that's what you want to be. You want to be fully immersed in everything that's happening. Yeah. You'll hear some things that maybe you don't understand, but you keep coming and you learn and just ask questions and network. I mean, there's so much information that I learn at every one of the, every one of the meetups that, you know, I've been at. There's just so much information out there about, because there's so, diff there's so many different styles of selling it's it being an amazon seller to me is like owning a business it's like it's so unique like the guy who owns uh, a sunglass kiosk versus the guy who owns a car dealership even though we're all amazon sellers our businesses are so unique the one thing that binds us is whether it's that guy you said which got 242 vas or yeah. us who is all in-house that, that blew my mind when you said that you know Mm -hmm. He also goes to bed at like seven o'clock and wakes up at four o'clock in the morning to handle the VAs. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's got to reschedule his whole life because yeah. most of them are in the Philippines. Yes, so that's tough. Yes, it is. But the, our digital marketing team is out there. They're in India. So I do have more than two VAs because our whole our whole digital marketing team's out there. So I just count agency? them. Yeah, I just count them as one, but it's a full agency. Yeah. It works, but yes, you have to be on their schedule or really all of our meetings just happen very early in the morning. Like they're, they're getting ready for bed and we're getting into the office. Right. But there's a lot of opportunity and you, you guys should definitely sign up for ASD. You have an LLC. We, we did sign up. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, have an LL, you have an LLC? Yeah. Oh, so you're registered and everything. At we the went uh, a few years ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. I think you said that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But I, I don't well, get we to... we were that. like half asleep. Yeah. 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 We're night people. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is normal time for me. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we go to work at 9 o'clock. I'm just getting going at, the, at this time. So. Oh, so when you asked why am I having a Red Bull, you meant it's for, too for, early. For it's a normal, too, for a normal You meant it's person, too early. Yeah, it's You're like, for you, it's like, why are you having a Red Bull already? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It might be a little bit expensive. I'm not sure what the price is, but at ASD right next door is the Prosper Show. Uh, you would get so much information from that show about selling on Amazon. Separate registration then? Separate, yeah. completely separate show. Okay. That one, that one you have to pay for. Okay. It's, it's expensive, but it's, uh, there's going to be hundreds if I think actually thousands, it's the largest, uh, there was I think 6,000 at the last, last show last year. So okay. thousands of Amazon sellers and just a lot of information, a lot of conferences, a lot of speakers. It, sounds, it, it's big. Good. I mean, you got to pay for, for information, right? It's yeah. Not free. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they, they put together a really good show, a really good venue. So, okay. you know, you're, you're, it, I don't, I don't like to say you're paying, you're investing. So what else guys, anything else? I, I feel like every question that I have, I have already answered in my head. Oh, good. That's so good. It's tough to kind of come up with uh, new questions because yeah. I kind of know the answers already. Yeah. But it, it's interesting to hear your response to some of them. Yeah. So, for example, like I said, my three bottlenecks. How are you handling, um, you know, inventory turn in your case, especially in the beginning? You know, you're you just started to see that Amazon's working really well for you. Yes. Started spending more money on inventory. Yes. How did you come up with a strategy to turn your inventory faster? It was about it it all start it all stems from sourcing. It all stems from how I'm reviewing my products. So I'm using a combination of well, I was, I was using a combination of Google Sheets at the time right. to put the information in. I was using the AMZ plus Scout uh, estimator. Jungle Scout, right? Uh, Jungle Scout, right. Um, or I'm not sure if uh, Inventory Lab provides you with velocity of what your sales are if you've sold the product before. Yeah, it gives you a number. Mm -hmm. It shows you a number. And what Amazon you shows you forecasting as well now. And what basically from what I see is if Amazon shows you a number, you cut it by one third. And that's the actual number it should be because they go very aggressive. I don't know why they want you to have more in stock. Maybe because then you'll drop the price aggressively to move it all. And it'll be, they'll be, their customers will be nice and happy. It's harder for me, you know, because I'm getting onesies and twosies. Yeah. And it's not like a replenishable, like probably what your work talking about. Yeah, so so the thing is it, it, that that's what it is. It's replenishable. So it depends what margin you're looking for. And then also testing it, like so. Do do some, if you know, if you're capable of, I would really recommend doing some testing. And you might lose some money. You might find out that okay, this didn't work. But try, you know, moving a little bit more volume and, and lowering the pricing and seeing if your if your profit for the month is higher. 
maybe your profit margin will be lower. And I don't know if your business can handle that. I don't know, you know, because I don't really know how how much can you pump uh, without, because it's labor intensive what you're doing, sure. without it hindering you on a daily basis and That's growing. Great. Yeah, and growing. Uh, but it went from diversifying. So if you have a lot of onesies, twosies, you need some 200s, 300s. Well, I, I do deal with a couple of wholesalers, yeah. specifically toys. Yeah, um, and you were talking about that grocery thing, and I, the great thing about grocery is if somebody orders it, they're gonna order in two weeks again. I just ran into some stuff with grocery that some of it became expired, other people tanked the listings, so yeah. I've had some not great experiences with grocery. But when you're selling that, I mean, the reason I got into sneakers last year was because it's like the complete opposite of grocery, right? Yeah. You know, and even even my my supplements and my health and beauty products. I mean, the supplements people are reordering, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. Right. Health and beauty products at least a couple times a year, quarterly, I could say. And groceries like every week, two weeks. Sure. Uh, but the apparel is something I wasn't into, which is has the highest of margins but it has the highest of returns and it has the lowest of reorders, the lowest. So, but if you blend it with a nice mix of its complete opposites, sure. no, it can, I, it can do it. really well. I get it. That's, that's, that, that would just be my recommendation if you're having a bottleneck and it's, it's, it's time to mix it up. And it would also allow you to, you know, bring somebody in that could maybe do it for you. You, you teach the right person and they could handle that whole wholesale the catalog and account and everything for you. Yeah, there's just, like I said, I went to the off price show, there's so many opportunities to build listings for stuff that just doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So many. Yeah, and and, and you you, just, you said it before, you throw it against the wall. Yeah. At one point, every every one of those listings didn't exist until no, they sure. until they did. I've been creating so many listings in the last two Okay, weeks. good, so you got the right, you got the right mindset, yeah. Yeah, it's been a pain in the ass. I mean, if we, I think in the last week, my my one my one buyer who he also handles the candy uh, purchasing. I think he must have had created not him himself, but he had between uh, the team created thirty different Easter listings, nice. which were like bun Easter bundles. Easter bundles, and we have ours from last year. I think we did thirty last year, and to add those thirty, one third were successful. But it was still, it still was well worth it because Easter had its huge margins. Valentine's, Easter's, you could out the roof, you know. You're getting, we're getting these eggs that we're bundling it and putting the candy in the eggs, and the eggs cost freaking a penny, and you're you're selling like twelve eggs for twenty dollars, you know. What about multiple stuff, you guys? Uh, we do, but we all? we stop purchasing. We'll stop purchasing multiples in the first week of March. So like right around the corner, we stop purchasing. We notice that you'll see by the third week in March, people are already starting to drop prices because May 1st, it's done. So like think chocolates and things like that, that, that uh, they're called meltables. Uh, Amazon doesn't allow it to be fulfilled in their warehouses from May 1st to October 1st. Because it gets so hot. Yeah. Because it gets so hot, and and the, you know customers are just getting chocolate syrup at that point. <laughs> so that and also gummies. So there's a lot of like vitamin gummies that aren't considered meltables, but we had high return rates in the summer where we stopped purchasing them because they order they order 280 gummies, but they just get one. <laughs> <laughs> they get one giant gummy, yeah, <laughs> gummy jar. So yeah, so that's so for us when it comes to like those products that we know are meltable, and the way to know if a product's meltable if you don't have history on it. Um, are you familiar with Keepa? Yeah. Okay, so it, Keepa has a their chart, and if you notice that from May to October there's no buy box uh, history, then you know it's a meltable product. Unfortunately, like one of the things with Amazon, like. They, they'll tell you if a product's meltable between May to October, but from October to May, if you, there, there's something, uh, if you search hazmat in their little search bar in Seller Central, you know, then you could put an ASIN in and it tells you if it's hazmat. If it's meltable, it'll tell you if it, that it's hazmat, but between May to October. From October to May, it wouldn't tell you that. So, like, you know, I've created so many cases saying, listen, you guys need to do something about this. Like, it, it's hurting, you know, 
it's hurting the sellers, which is hurting the customers because there's just not enough information knowing whether, they, they expect you to know the flash point of a product, which is like, I forgot what it is, but like the, it's, it's when they make chocolates, like they flash it with like a blast at like 195 degrees. And if it melts with that quick flash, then that's the flash point. And that means the product's meltable. And they expect sellers to know that information and they don't provide it to us unless it's between that time period. Are you guys selling hazmat stuff? Yes. Aerosols? Stuff very, like very high, very high profit margins and not a lot of competition. Yeah, I'm approved for hazmat. And now that I can't tell, we end up getting shipments that have to get shipped in another uh, way versus traditional UPS. Yeah. So, but yeah, we sell some aerosols once in a while. Yeah. Some, uh, Glade products and some other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, especially in bundles. Yeah, yeah, no, aerosols do well. I mean, one of my buyers bought butane and I thought he lost his mind. Butane. But I thought he lost his mind because you can't even send that in. And we did an FBM ground uh, and it did phenomenal for us. So in that hazmat area, you're saying there's low competition because not everybody can sell those? Uh, because, uh, yes, and because if you look in your uh, manage FBA shipments, if you go the, to that screen, that uh -huh. view, at the bottom there, you'll see uh, your inventory storage limits. Uh -huh. And for standard products, oversized products, footwear, apparel products, you probably have unlimited, well, you do have unlimited if your IPI is over 400. Yeah. Uh, but for hazmat and flammable, if you're e if you're even allowed to sell sell those products, uh, you have very limited amounts, and then they slowly increase it, but only by you using it. So you need to be tapping it out month after month, and then they they'll increase it. Okay. So yeah, it's it's the way they operate. So a lot of sellers have a, just a small range. I think it starts with like five cubic feet or. Two maybe 25 cubic feet I forget what it is and then you got to grow it and then you got to create a case with Amazon and and tell them hey I need more space look my past 90 days I've been hitting the limits okay. so yeah so because of that because it's kind of a nuisance uh, there's not People many sellers it. doing it and yeah. so because there's not many sellers doing it there's more opportunity Perfume uh, and also falls. That. yeah I stay away from perfume and cologne, and it's just my own thing because, and, and other sellers have oh. said the same thing. Yeah, like, yeah. when You're when so you much. when when you get that counterfeit claim, and Amazon looks at that completely different. I don't know. They, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was all counterfeit at one time, but they're very aggressive with the counterfeit on perfume and cologne. I mean, I'm I'm skeptical anytime I would buy cologne outside of a department store. Yeah, <laughs> just because. So much. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? It's just part of the business. You just kind of you grow and you learn. And I mean, I, 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 you know, some people call it mistakes. I call it learning experiences. I have a, I have a million learning experiences yeah. in this business. Makes you better for the next one. Yeah. Exactly. So what's next for Amazon Lit? So right now, the next thing is the meetup. And then after that, we have, uh, you know, we're working on some uh, material for this immersion program we're going to be doing to kind of take, uh, we have uh, three different programs that we're working on for like beginning sellers, which is like everything kind of uh, seller central and all the information pertaining to that. And then there's a uh, more advanced program, which is kind of like sourcing and, and the way we do it and exactly kind of the way we train our buyers to do it. So those are the things Eric and I have been working on behind the scenes now for quite some time. It's going to be a wholesale program? And then I know because it's, it's a private label in there too, PPC. Uh, we have interviews with some really big sellers and a lot of uh, interviews with uh, Amazon Associates, two Amazon Associates who work over in Seattle, and then a couple interviews with uh, like uh, companies like Jungle Scout, Helium 10, and, and, and diving deep into certain subjects, all, all different subjects pertaining to PPC, launching products, so it's, it's, it's not just wholesale. Yeah, if, I mean, if you guys don't have anything else, I think we'll just kind of yeah. close it off here. Well, thank you for uh, sharing with us. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. Much. Yeah. Check it out. Thanks, man. Yeah. It was I'll nice be in touch meeting for you. you. Nice to meet 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 you. Have a good night. You too. You guys know your way out of here? Yeah.
We'll find just, out. Just yeah. left and then <laughs> eventually went to an elevator.